Good morning, Connect Community Church. Can you believe that half of 2020 is already gone? What a year this has been. As we go forward, I urge you to embrace life as it is now to the fullest. It might not be the way that we like it. It's certainly not the same as we've had it. But let's embrace the things that we do have instead of complaining about the things that we miss or that we don't have. This morning we're going to be looking at a verse that is very familiar, in fact, probably the most familiar verse in the Bible. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This verse may be the best known, but maybe it's the most misunderstood. Because some people rattle it off so quickly, they might even rival an auctioneer. There's some people that don't pay attention to it. There's some people that presume on it also. Andy Stanley has a breakdown of this verse that I love. It's like this. God loved. God gave. We believe. We receive. Let me flesh that out for you a little bit. God loved. At times we take God for granted and we take his love for granted. Some people, even some Christians, I've heard them say this. It's okay if I sin because God knows my weaknesses. It's okay if I sin because God knows I couldn't handle the temptations. It's okay if I sin, some people say, because things just got out of control. God will understand. And some people say this, and this is a favorite excuse. It's okay if I sin because the devil made me do it. Let me be straight. It's not okay to sin. Oh, it's true that God will forgive us our sins. 1 John 1, 9 is in the Bible. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But if we wantonly and willfully sin in God's face, so to speak, do we even understand God's love? Do we even know God's love? Do we even know God? I can't answer these questions for you, but I must ask them of myself. We should do this. We should revel in the love of God. We should thank him for his love. We should accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, but don't presume on the love of God. How great is God's love? Well, I've read this before, but I read it again to you. Romans 8, 31 to 39. It speaks of it. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, with him, graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is it? Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wow, what a wonderful statement that is. And actually, this is a good transition text to our second point, God gave. God gave his son, Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity, to come to earth, to live, to die for us, take our sins upon himself, to die for us. But he rose again, victorious over sin, Satan, and death. 
If the angels praise him in heaven, how much more should we on earth? Let me read a couple of passages from the book of Revelation. First of all, in chapter 4, verses 8 and 11. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within, and day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. And then in Revelation chapter 5, verses 6 to 12, And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain, with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the, the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for, your, for God, from every tribe and language and people and nation, and you have made them a kingdom and priest to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and I heard around the throne of the living creatures and the elders the voice of many angels numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands sang with a loud voice. Worthy is a lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. The next two points are really incredibly simple. But at the same time, I guess they're incredibly difficult. We believe, that's the third part of John 3.16, that whoever believes in him, one must believe that Jesus is God who took on flesh, God incarnate. One must give up their pride. I need God, is what we need to say. That is the hard part. One must trust, trust Jesus Christ as their Savior, because there is no other way of salvation. And the fourth part of this verse, after God loved, God gave, we believe, we receive. Once a person believes, the verse says, shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's it. God's promises are true. We can completely rely upon them. Have you believed? Have you received? Let's pray. Lord, as well known as this verse is, it is so powerful in its message. I pray that people will take it to heart that if they haven't believed on your message that you loved and gave, that they would believe and receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. We pray this in his name. Amen. God bless you richly, my friends, and make it a great day.